time like. So what's really going to happen is let's do a quick explanation of what Lightroom is in comparison to Photoshop, and then I'm going to show you how Lightroom interacts with Photoshop. So uh, Lightroom is a parametric editor. That is, it takes your original file, uh, you apply settings to it, and then it creates a new file from those settings when you export, or even just when you're previewing. Whereas when you're working in Photoshop, it's a pixel editor. So that means that you change things, and it essentially changes the original image. Okay? The good thing about Lightroom is that you can go back and easily change anything, and you never have the original file touched whatsoever. But there's a lot of things you can't do with it. You can't, you can't stitch images together, you can't do HDR stuff, you can't uh, composite images together. So this is stuff that you need Photoshop for. So essentially, I'm just going to show you some of the workflow so you can do some of the stuff that you need to do in Photoshop and Photoshop, but still working from a Lightroom environment. And then show you some stuff that you can do with certain types of files that you can't do in Photoshop that you can do in Lightroom, which is really, really good for people doing HDR and stuff like that. So what I'm really looking at is I'm looking at this menu here, which is the photo menu, edit in. So I'll be looking at the options for the round trip between Lightroom and Photoshop. Because the products are made by Adobe, it means that Lightroom is aware of Photoshop and Photoshop's aware of Lightroom. So they're able to talk to each other, which is really handy for managing your files. Um, because what happens is when you send a file out to Photoshop and you save it, it'll come back into Lightroom automatically. It'll be stored beside the files that you started with, which is a really, really cool thing. So I'm going to start off with a very basic one. And so this is going to be pretty quick because it's, you know, it's not a long talk and a lot of the stuff that's in it happens pretty quickly and I've deliberately gone for smaller files for most of it so that we're not waiting and processing. So it's going to edit in Photoshop CS6. Uh, because I've restarted, it means that I have to wait for Photoshop CS10 open. This little warning here just tells me that I'm not up to date with Camera Raw because uh, I've just put CS6 on this machine. If you are using any version past 7.1 uh, of Camera Raw, then this dialogue doesn't matter. You can be if you if you're on like whatever, say we're up as far as like 4.6, we're on 4.3 at the moment. Even if we're going back to 7.1, it wouldn't matter because there was only a small change in how processing works in 7.1. So after that there's no changes in how processing works. So stick open anyway. And then this is going to open in Photoshop. I'm just going to do something very quickly to this. I bring it back and we see it go back into Lightroom itself. This process here we're doing is basically we're going to edit a file and it's going to create a, a rendered file. But when the file is rendered, if you bring that file back, we're going to do something destructive, which is we're going to make a black and white. That's going to remove the color, so when the color is gone, there's no way to bring it back. So I'm just going to go uh, desaturate image. Okay, it's now starting to recover stuff. We want to recover stuff. And so image, <coughs> adjustments. Uh, actually desaturate down here, which is shift command U or shift control U, desaturate, that's going to throw away the colour. So now I'm literally just going to save the image, save, and the image that I'm seeing is just saving up here, so that's now saved. So if we go back into Lightroom, now, it'll take a couple of seconds when we'll come back and show up. It won't show up, you can just control. Uh, so we go to folder or library, so we're just going to the actual folder that the file is in. So we can see we now have a black and white image showing up. So this is an edited version of the file that's now gone to Photoshop and comes straight back into Lightroom. So we don't have to go looking for the image after we've edited it, so it's there. Okay? So I'm now going to delete that image, because I'm going to show you uh, the, the next of these options that we have for editing in Photoshop. Okay, so the next option we have in editing is open as a smart object in Photoshop. Does anybody here know what a smart object is? Are you familiar with smart objects? A smart object is a way of bringing something into Photoshop, working with it in Photoshop, applying filters to it, and then being able to go back and completely change the file and completely change the filters. Okay? So I'm going to open this as a smart object in Photoshop. And again, it's going to open up now. So we close that other file. Just so we don't get confused. Okay. So if we look here, I'm just going to zoom in slightly. We have this little symbol here. That's a symbol that lets us know that it's a smart object. In fact, you can see the, uh, the help is just showing up that it's a smart object. So I'm just going to zoom back down. So now what I'm going to do is, if I double click on that little icon on the thumbnail, it'll open up the file in Camera Raw. 
which gives us the same settings as we have in develop. So if I wanted, I could come to saturation here, and I desaturate here in camera raw, and click OK. So it's going to take that information and go back. So I have a black and white file. So I'm going to save that. So it's now saving. And I'm just going to save that to close it. Go back into Lightroom. You can see we now have this file in Lightroom. Okay, and if you just have a quick there, you can see it's a TIFF file. So if I now go back and go just edit in as a normal uh, object, edit original, because if you don't edit original when you do this, what happens is Lightroom will send a flattened file, and we don't want that. We actually want to edit the file with the smart object in it. So again, we've got the black and white file. Double click on that icon, jump with the camera off, and the camera footer. Okay. Is it number one, is it? Is that louder now? Okay. So bring the saturation back up to zero. Click OK. And so it's in color, save again. Back into Lightroom. And should update now. Property. Yeah, I think I should read metadata from the file. So I've had to force it basically to, to read it again so it sees the edits. You see, we now have that image as now a, a color file. So we can go back and edit this image at any stage. And you can do stuff in, you can add, do uh, like adjustment layers and stuff like that on top of it inside Photoshop. And you can always go back and change the original file. So that's what smart objects do. And they're very handy for stuff if you're like doing sharpening, you can apply sharpening to it and then change the sharpening afterwards. So it's one way of getting around the fact that a Photoshop is destructive to use smart objects. The next option, which I'm going to look at very quickly so I do these in the right order, is panorama. So we're going to go down to get some panorama images. So here's uh, three images. So I just press G for grid mode there. I'm just going to put them in order and drag them in order. A quick note about dragging in Lightroom. You have to be in a collection or in the lowest level folder, otherwise it won't let you drag. I'll just show you that if I was here, say in 2012 with these three images, and I go to start dragging, it won't let me. Okay, and it gives me a warning that the custom uh, order is not supported. So you'd have to go down to the bottom level folder like there before it'll actually allow you to start dragging. So I'm just going to run from the collection initially. So I'm going to select the three images. I go photo. And because there's more than one image selected, these other options now become available. So I can go merge the panorama in Photoshop. Again, it's giving me that warning I talked about earlier. So when I'm, the way I shot these with the panel is that there's a couple of options. The main one that people would use is auto. But because I have a certain line in the middle of the image, I tend to go for cylindrical. So just try and press keep the middle of the image in the middle, basically. So select cylindrical, and I'm going to go for vignette removal and geometric distortion corrections. So I'm going to try and fix the lens corrections, basically. So I click OK. Now, I've deliberately done these with smaller files, because if you're using full resolution files like 21 megapixels, 22 megapixels, you're going to be waiting, you know, because it is time consuming. So these nice 1500 pixel wide files will do it very quickly. Okay, so you see that's done that pretty quick. I'm going to go crop and maybe do a little bit of fill um, to show you some stuff, but to actually start working on these files, we need to basically merge them into one layer. Um, you could just merge down if you wanted, so you flatten the image, sorry, and that will just give you a flat, or what you can do is you can use the claw, which is shift. Uh, option Command E, or if you're on PC, it's Shift Alt Control E. What that will do is it'll create a new layer of everything on top of the current layers. So now I'm going to do quick crop. So over here, I'm just going to move it out there, and move it slightly there. So what I'm going to do is now that we've done the crop, I'm going to jump out and go to the listening tool. That's probably a bit too optimistic what I'm doing there. I'll come down here and do it down here instead. And I'm going to go uh, edit, fill. I'm going to go for content aware fill. Content aware fill basically 
We look around, we can try and match what's already in the image and we'll try to fill in that section there. To make it look roughly light, that's done a reasonable job. We can do the same here, the last we tool up in the sky. And I'm just going to go shift and backspace to bring up the same the fill menu. And that fills it in there. And I'm going to try this one here, but I think I'm being a little bit optimistic because there's such a variety in there. Okay, that's not bad at all. Uh, and you could probably with them just fix those little bits as well. So I'm literally going shift and F5, uh, sorry, shift and backspace there. Alright, so there we go, made my file. I'm going to flatten the image as well just to keep it nice and small. And then file save. And then go back to Lightroom. And you can see that we have our panel here in Lightroom. So it just comes back very quickly. So it's a, it's a really good workflow for just managing those images. Um,